Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, bringing you another League of Legends commentary. This will be a fairly short one, and you can see our team composition at the top right here. This is our fixed team. We've got a Gragas and a Mumu, a Sonu and Ash, and Leprechaun Vega. Top of the morning to you, indeed. And we're against a Singed, a Trundle, a Brand, a Caitlyn, and a Jana. This is in the ranked ladder, and so you're ranked 5v5. We banned Annie, as does apparently everybody these days. Our lead, who happens to be Total Digest, he's our, I believe he's our highest yellow player. He absolutely despises the fact that you all keep banning Annie, so I would strongly recommend that you continue to ban Annie, because pissing off Total Digest is hilarious. He's going to be playing Esquire Gragas right here, or Gragas Esquire, and I'll be playing Leprechaun Vega. Incidentally, the first thing I want to say is thank you to everyone that helped me get 5,000 referrals. I now have access to all champions and all skins, including all of the promotional ones and ones that aren't available anymore. So thank you very much, and I shall be showing off some of the more ridiculous skins in future videos, no doubt. I'll also be using the ability to check out new champions once they come in. Hopefully give you some first impressions as well as a look at some of the newer skins that end up coming out. Anyway. We don't really want to invade with this setup. We're not too comfortable, so we're just going to hang around and defend our jungler, who's a Mumu. And, of course, their jungler will be Trundle. Trundle is quite dangerous when played correctly, but he's a little bit of a tricky champion, as you've seen. Difficult to actually handle properly. Some of his abilities require a certain amount of finesse. And Vega needs to shut up. Let's just move away from there. I think it was just nothing but emote spamming since we're clairvoyancing each other. Yes, quiet, quiet Vega. So Vega's one of my favorite casters. He's got a lot of burst potential. He's also got some great crowd control. And he's kind of funny. He generally goes in a solo lane because he's quite reliant on this, the Baleful Strike. Now, what Baleful Strike does is if you kill a target, you gain one AP. So, that's quite nice. And you also gain 1 AP when you kill a champion from any source of damage, regardless. But, nah, <laughs> that's not so important. We're not really too concerned about that. Baleful Strike means that you want to be in a solo lane because you are very dependent on last hits. More so than a lot of other heroes. Your ability power is going to be directly affected by how many last hits you get with Baleful Strike. So, regardless of the setup I'm running here, I believe I am running... Let's, let me see if I can actually remember. It, uh, magic Penetration, reds, and some AP blues, and some Mana Regeneration yellows, if I recall correctly. I, I might be wrong. I, I don't remember my exact setup. In this case, I'll be going for some boots and three health potions. And you might wonder why. Why have you done that? And also, why have you picked Cleanse? Well, during the selection process, we knew that their mid would be Bran. Yeah? And they'd pick this, and we had the last pick, so we were absolutely certain it was going to be Bran. So I picked Vega, and I went with Cleanse, because I know Bran has a nasty stun, and Bran also has a damage over time effect. I can get rid of the stun by using Cleanse, and it also reduces the duration of new ones applied for 65% for 3 seconds. So, Cleanse is very nice in that regard. Usually I wouldn't take Cleanse, but in this case, it was a deliberate pick of a summoner skill to counter what they have. And that's going to work out quite nicely. And you might wonder, well, why did you go Boots? I mean, why not a Maki Pendant, or why not a Doran's Ring, or even a Sapphire Crystal or something like that to start building a Catalyst? Well... The reason behind that is that I know Brand has an area of effect attack on the ground. It looks something like that. And if I have boots, then I can get out of that attack much easier. So I will gain some early lane dominance because he's not going to be able to do too much damage to me. He can't harass me too much with his abilities that cost a little bit too much mana. He's primarily going to be focused on farming with his area of effect attack. So I'm going to avoid that. I'm not going to get hit by it. And I'm going to pick up plenty of last hits. Now, I would expect him initially to get more creep kills than me. The reason behind that, of course, is because he has area of effect. But once I start to get to the stage where I can really harass him, I should be able to push him out of lane and make up that deficit very easily, which is the reason I've done that. Now we have Gragas in the top lane, that's solo top versus Singed, which to me is a fair matchup. Uh, I would think the Total Digest can take Singed without too much of a problem. Admittedly, Trundle in there, causing a few problems. But again, Gragas is very hard to gank. 
And the reason is he actually has a dash, which allows him to get out of it very easily. And he's also got an ultimate at level 6, which can cause his opponents to scatter all over the place. He's got all sorts of tricks to get out of a situation like that. And, of course, he also took Flash. Total Digest seems to insist that we all take Flash, regardless of what hero we're on. And most of the time, he's right. Flash is just so incredibly useful. It's an amazing skill, and it can save your life where no other skill could. But that is certainly something to consider. Now, I'll look at the creep kills, and we'll see exactly how well I'm doing in the middle. I would expect to be behind Brand at this point, and indeed I am, by a small amount. It's not too bad, though. I'm getting plenty of AP last hits, and I'm building up a nice little reserve of ability power. And that is going to really start exceeding Brand's AP very shortly. The thing is, I actually want Brand to get a lot of AP, and this is the reason. Primordial Burst. Primordial Burst... It hits for 250 plus 45 at the current state. You can see it's got a very, very nice ratio from AP through to the actual extra damage it gets. And then 80% of target AP and magic damage. I did get hit by an AoE there, which wasn't exactly too pleasant, but nothing I really need to worry about. I brought a couple of health potions for that, and with Vega I can pretty much get to full health on a single health potion by taking that amount of damage. In the meantime, I find myself a Trundle. Cleanse myself out of the slow, and then flash through there to avoid him. That was a little bit silly on uh, my part. I actually went down to maybe try and help down here, and I almost got myself ganked. That was extremely stupid. We don't really have much ward coverage around here. I would have expected Sona maybe to have warded Dragon by now, but obviously that's not the case. You might wonder, well, why Sona? Why, why do you expect Sona to ward the Dragon? Well, Sona's our support hero, so Sona's going to be the one that is probably going to be taking gold generating items and is also going to be using wards. You see, she's actually got two right there. Trying to keep up ward coverage and not taking creep kills from Ash who is going to be our ranged attack damage carry. So we don't want to be doing that. See, she's got two. That was deliberate. She's deliberately not taking anything like that. And if you're going to play a support Sona, that is the role you've got to take. Sona is very, very popular in ranked play for obvious reasons. Very powerful hero, but not so popular when you're doing maybe solo ranked because good luck convincing anybody to play her. People want to play heroes that they get mad kills and mad skills with, and... You don't do that with Sona. That's not what Sona's for. But if you like winning, then Sona's a really nice hero to have on your team. That's something to consider. Do you really care about KD more than winning? I know I don't. I want my ladder points. Give them to me. Now, Vega can stay in lane quite a bit at the start, even without magic regen items. Now, there are some arguments towards taking mana regeneration runes and a Mackie pendant. I don't don't go for that. I don't think it limits you that much. As long as you're not throwing a lot of abilities away, his passive will really help keep him in the lane. And he can throw out bane Baleful Strikes. Maybe not at the rate that you would want, but in this case, I had to take these boots. And that also means I get early Sorcerer's Shoes as well, which against Brand is going to be absolutely fantastic. Brand is not sitting on a huge amount of magic resistance at the moment. As you can see, he's only got 30. So, including my 15% from talents, plus that, I'm going to be hitting him like a truck. And that's exactly what I want to be happening. Okay, there's the target. Can we get him? I don't think so. I mean, we're not in a great position. Brand's playing fairly passively. He's pretty cautious, I'll give him that. And while I don't think he's got this bush warded, in fact, it's almost impossible that he has, we do screw this up entirely. I could have maybe landed an event horizon, but we couldn't have got the kill anyway. Stealthy Ninja doesn't have his ultimate, and I didn't have any mana to follow up with any kind of big nuke, and I don't have my mana for ult yet either, so nothing was really going to happen there. But it's okay. Well, we don't need to kill him right now. We're doing absolutely fine. Funnily enough, there's been a very passive Massive game thus far. We've had no kills on either side, but we're farming quite nice. If you have a look at how Gragas is doing at the top, for instance, he's doing pretty well. He's actually got more kills than Singed, which is impressive in and of itself. Singed tends to farm kills in a ridiculous manner, thanks to the poison. But Gragas is pretty good at it as well, thanks to his... I like to call it his beer attack. We'll go with that. In this case, it's his fine Pinot Noir attack. We'll go with that too. So that's going well. Bottom down here, which is, once again, a ranged AD and a support, which is why it's such a, such a passive lane. Neither of them can really do anything to each other. Our guys are doing pretty well. We'll have a look and say that we've got 37 kills there, and Caitlyn's on 45. So there's a bit of a disparity, but not a huge amount. Nothing that can't be fixed. Now, Brand is completely out of mana here, which means, of course, he has really no ability to farm. He can't do his AoE, so... 
That's cool. I can maybe harass him a little bit, or I can just take lane control and take last hits. In the meantime, they're trying to gank Gragas. That's never a good idea. It's almost impossible, in fact. Trundle not able to land a good pillow of filth, and Trundle now out of position. Might even be the case that a Moomoo can go in there, but we'll have to see. There's the initial barrel attack right there. Now, he is using his ulti right now. A stealthy Ninja's going forward, but that was badly timed, and he's not going to come back in the lane after that one. In the meantime, nothing happening down the bottom once again. Very, very passive first 10 minutes of this game. It, it does start to wind up quite a little bit. Now, one of the other things that I really, really like about Vega is Event Horizon. Event Horizon is so incredibly powerful. Incredibly good. And as I was saying that, there's the double cleanup down the bottom. Excellent opening. Event Horizon is quite tricky to execute, but it creates a ring on the ground, and if you run into the edge of it, you end up getting stunned. So it makes Vega very hard to gank if he's got mana, because you can surround yourself with that, and if you land it properly, you can stun an entire team with it. It's very, very cool. Right, now I've come out there with a ludicrous amount of cash, so I'm pretty happy about that. We're going to go straight into Sorcerer's Shoes, and I'm gonna, actually going to rush a Rabadon's Death Cap right here. Some people argue that this is not ideal. I would disagree in this particular situation. A lot of builds tend to focus around rushing a Deathfire Grasp, and if you don't know what a Deathfire Grasp actually is, I can show you. Indeed, it's one of the recommended items. This is a Deathfire Grasp. Now, the main thing about Deathfire is the fact that it has an active ability that does a big amount of burst damage. It's useful, certainly. It's basically the caster equivalent of Mandred's Blood Razor, but with an active component as opposed to just a passive on hit. It's really nice, and it gives Vega a huge amount of burst damage. The main problem I've got with it is that once you're done, that's it. If you've thrown out your combo, and your combo gen tends to go something like this. You start with a Dark Matter, yeah, and then you will either stun, or you'll stun before that to land the Dark Matter, whichever is more appropriate at the time. You'll go Baleful Strike Primordial Burst, and if you have a Death Fire, you would actually open with the Death Fire because you want to do the maximum amount of damage, just 30% of current health. So you don't finish with the Death Fire, you open with it. Either you do that or you go with the Dark Matter first, assuming you know that you can land it. You've got to mix up the combo depending on what happens. So if you know you can land Dark Matter and you're going to use that to initiate the combo, great, go for it. Smack him about a little bit. You want to see combo? That's combo right there. Now, I don't have Dark Matter. I wasn't able to kill him, but I just melted most of his HP incredibly fast. Now, if I had a Death Fire here, I would have killed him, but there's no way I could have got a Death Fire by this point. I just don't have the money. So, I'm not really too worried about that. And it's forced him out of the lane, and that's the main thing. I have free farm, and he's not gaining experience, which is fantastic. So, this is why I was saying that, yes, Brand is going to outpace you in the early game, but that's not going to say, oh my god, he's sticking around. That's not very smart at all. So, if he's going to hang around the place, then we might be able to do something to him. In the meantime, bottom lane doing extremely well. Ash hasn't even gone back yet. Ash is going to have a ton of money in the meantime. He is being cocky. We wouldn't want that now, would we? I have no idea why he's sticking around. It is suicidally stupid. And Amuma is going to pick that kill up. Now, I could have grabbed that with Baleful Strike, but it doesn't matter too much. I'm okay with that. Give a moon with a kill. It's not really a big deal. At the end of the day, he's been forced out of the lane, and I'm dominating the middle lane quite nicely. It's always nice to give a Moomoo at least one kill, so he's got a bit of cash and experience. Uh, Trundle's going to hang around here. I don't know what kind of damage we can really do. I can give him a Baleful Strike for 290. That's a good hit. Very, very good hit. He's actually going to stick around. I think I can probably get him there. There you go. Smack. Do not stick around if you know why Baleful Strikes are hitting you that hard. He was extremely confident in the tower's ability to ward off damage. Pro tip, it doesn't work that way. In the meantime, oh god, we are getting flanked. However, we do see that thanks to the ward, and we're going to move out of that immediately. Now, I'm not too worried about the gank potential of those guys right here. I've got Event Horizon at level 4. I get a big, big stun, so I'm not too worried about that. Looking to try and do some damage right here. Thing is, we don't know where Trundle is. Brand is back up as well, so this, is, this could be a four-man. I want to be a little bit careful about that. And it also looks like... There you go. Ash Arrow sadly misses. We could have got a lot of kills out of that, but Ash Arrow a little bit out of the way. There's the stun, and we can pick up Brand once again. Let's see. If that Ash Arrow had hit, I think we could have probably cleaned that up entirely, but it happens. Ash Arrows are tricky to judge, especially across that kind of distance. In the meantime, we're looking to try and force the middle just a little bit. Get some good farm. The bottom lane is now completely unattended. 
Trundle right there taking the blue, however, not really in an ideal position to go after him. It's too easy for him to escape, considering he has Pillow of Filth. So if we went in there, he'd just block off and run away. So we're not really too concerned about that. In the meantime, Caitlyn taking the middle. Sensible idea. However, she is underleveled in comparison to me. And I have the red buff, which you might think, well, that's really useless. And it kind of is, yes. <laughs> but every now and again, you do actually auto-attack as part of your big damage combo. You can follow it up with an auto attack for a little bit extra, and if you have a red, then cool. If you actively go after the red as Vega, then you are actually a douchebag. So don't do it. That would be a horrible thing to do. Not too keen on that. But yeah, getting great creep kills here. Very happy with it. 68. I should have that, and Greg is farming like a boss, but then again, he has a big area of effect. Now, there are some arguments for going for an earlier Dark Matter, which would allow you to get that kind of farm. It can happen. It depends what kind of lane you're really in. And for me, I don't like it because really you should be trying to pick off last hits early on with Baleful Strike, which is nice and easy to do. And the amount of mana that Dark Matter actually costs, it makes it very prohibitive to do it so much early game. So there are some builds, and I have played successful Vega builds that go for Dark Matter first, one rank of Event Horizon, and then alternate Baleful Strike. But... In this case, I prefer the heavier Baleful Strike build, just because it gives me that early AP. And while I don't maybe farm quite as much as I could, it does mean that I at least have mana to use, whereas I wouldn't early game if I was just throwing down Dark Matter. I'd probably be forced to get a Mackie Pendant, and that would change my build around just a little bit. Brand sitting on top of one of our wards. Not exactly the brightest idea ever. Sneaking around. Can we get him? We can certainly look for it. There you go. And that's what you really have to do. You've got to make sure that you hit them with the edge of your event horizon. And it takes a little bit of practice, but it's, it's, it's a weird sort of skill shot e kind of thing that makes that pattern on the ground. You have to aim the edge. You know, you, you've got to do it basically like this, you can see. If, let's just say, the enemy hero is where Sonar is, you've got to aim it here. You can land that in a split second, then it's great stunt like that, for instance, you know. We aim it there, and I think that was kind of overkill city, but you know what, we really don't like Caitlyn, so I'm actually all right with that. This is not going well for their team thus far, I have to say. I've certainly seen better games. Our team is doing quite nicely. I'm sitting on a good amount of AP, and once again, there is the land, and that was a nice use of the ulti right there by Jana. very nice. Those ultis are fantastic, I might add. I've seen some amazing use of it. You can actually push people away. You can push people out, out of their own abilities that have any kind of channeling, for instance. But unfortunately, she decided to hang around, which was not a smart move. Again, I think the amount of confidence in that tower, a little bit too high on this team. Take ourselves a free tower out of that as well. Smash our way through that, no problem at all. Brand on his own in the middle right here. That could be a mistake. Now, we could have maybe gone in a bit quicker, and I think we could have just destroyed Brand right now if Amar had maybe gone straight for, say, the movement aura and we'd just rushed him. But I don't know. We don't have a, know really how many wards he's got, and it, is, it seems kind of silly to just completely abandon this area when we have great control over it. There's all sorts of possibilities that we can get into another fight that will get us even more than one kill, so something to consider. Uh, Brand's definitely not there now. We've got free push in the middle right here, so we can start applying some real pressure to this tower, if we so desire. Our Amumu is out of buff, so he'll be looking to try and grab himself a red in the process. Gragas has just been smacking his opponent around all game. It's kind of amusing. You'll notice what Gragas is going here. It is a fairly heavy AP group build. We've got Sorcerer's Shoes, a needlessly large rod, and two Doran's Rings. Yeah, that, that's quite nasty. AP Gragas does work. It really, really does, surprisingly enough. And yes, that's misreading that ability power. Don't worry about that. That's just the way the replay system currently works. It's not ideal. Oh, no, they're trying to gank Gragas, which doesn't work. <laughs> you can't. You just can't do it. Now, if Quiz was putting down maybe good pillars of filth, then I could say, okay, cool. But I don't think Quiz really knows all that much about playing Trundle, so... Trollolol. Here's a possibility. That could be a dead singed right here. Not so keen on maybe taking the Trundle, but I could kill the Singed. The Singed is, needless to say, trying to build a little bit of AP, but he doesn't actually have any just yet. He's going for Catalyst, so he's probably looking to get Rod of Ages. There's the stun and the follow-up combo right there. Kill stealing Gragas. Wow, we'll let him have it as the team captain. We were actually arguing on Vent as to whether I could have gotten that kill. It's like, well, with an auto attack, yeah, I would have got it, but... Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, feeding Gragas is fine too. As long as 
our guys are getting good farm, which they are. I mean, we're nine for zero right now. There's really nothing wrong with that at all. End up eating some damage right there, which is not too pleasant. That cleanse was a little ill-timed. I'm really not used to using cleanse. I barely ever use it, but in this case, it was recommended that I take it against Bran, and it turned out to be fairly useful. Something that I'll definitely do in future if I go up against a mid-brand. And now, a possibility for a nice team fight, perhaps. You might say, well, there's a tower there. Yeah, but we have so much crowd control, so much stun and nuking ability. I'm not so worried about that tower. I think we can easily take one. Easily. Maybe more than that. And there we go. Let's just smack around their support. There we go. Jana is completely annihilated. Nothing to really worry about there. And uh, now they're going to hug their tower. The question is, will that help them? Singed at the front, which is standard. You know, we'll try and do that. Wonderful rainbows, yes. The leprechaun skin is fantastic. Either he mad or he disconnect. But whatever the case, they're not even happy about that, so they're surrendering immediately, so. He was a little angry. <laughs> what can I say? There you go. That's a little bit of Vega gameplay for you. One of my favorite casters. Hopefully bring you a few more gameplays in the not-too-distant future. Once again, thanks for helping me get 5,000 referrals. 10,000 is the next goal. I don't know if we'll manage that. It'll be cool to try. I'll see you next time.